welcome to this YouTube uh, video where I will be working on this lace applique repair job that I have been talking about on Instagram. Here's a little close up of the damage if you haven't already seen it. Um, so here is the top in question that we have and the lace piece that I plan to pop onto it. I'm just going to leave some markers for myself. That's the top edge. going to be one side. I've just got a rough idea of where I want it to go. I'll take all my pins out. Okay, let's take the other side. So you can see the damage there that is left over and I've cut myself a window on my calico so that I can mount up my top and the area that I want to work in into this space. So that's where I'm going to start. Pin this into place. This mounting is going to tension the fabric. So I know that the tension is going to remain correct whilst I work with it. Now this video is going to be a bit of an unusual one in that um, part way through this video I will be joining stitching on Instagram live um, as well as filming for you so I'm going to get quite chatty a little bit later on when I come to the Instagram live part hopefully <laughs> And when I do that, then um, I'm sure you guys will know what's going on. So now I'm just going to work in my normal manner to get this piece prepared and all ready to go to join Instagram later.
the moment, as you've probably gathered, I'm just preparing the lace and deciding on the shape that I want from my lace design. Just cutting away the bits that I don't need. You can start to see the taking shape there. You keep placing it back where you want it and make sure that's looking how you think so yeah we've got three little nice like tendrilly bits to fall off the edge there I think that'll be cute I'm gonna keep these leaves reaching towards that side seam Deep concentration on this bit.
can have a look at this place with deciding if my own back covers it or not, and what we want to do. Okay. I think that's quite good. It got super rainy here for a few minutes, so you'll have to excuse the sound quality as uh, I'm afraid we didn't have any control over the weather. Hello, hello, and welcome to this London Embroidery School Stitch Along, where today I will be working on this lace applique piece. Um, we are using the lace applique techniques today to try and salvage this top that um, was very unfortunately damaged in an ironing related accident. And I'm sure you guys will sympathise with me when I say I think we've all been there and ruin something that we really liked. Um, so I hope today that this will give you some inspiration maybe to try out using lace applique for yourself for slightly more practical purposes than you might have thought about before. Um, for me I think it's a really lovely technique to use in this way because see I've got this top that otherwise would be you know, for the bin really. Um, but I just remove, I don't know if you guys have seen the damage on the photos, but I'm just gonna remove a couple of these pins just so you can have a little peek. So you can quite clearly see that, you know, the steam vents of the iron here, and it is quite burnt um, and sort of rough feeling there. You'll also see that we've actually got a big hole here and a couple of smaller ones down here. So I'm just gonna catch you up initially on what I've already done on the, the slightly less interesting bits because obviously on Instagram I only have an hour maximum that I can spend with you guys. Um, so I've tried to do some of the less interesting bits because I think you're probably here to watch me stitch more than anything. Um, let me know if I'm right on that front. So yeah, I have first of all um, secured any of the unstable parts of the lace, um, sorry, of the fabric of the top by using Vileen, which I did iron on very carefully, might I add, very careful after what has already happened. Um, I have mounted up the area that I want to work in on some calico. So I'm going to try and turn my frame over just so you can have a little sneak peek at that and what I mean by that. Okay, so bear with me. Wait one sec. We will be coming back. So if you can just see from the wrong side here, that's the violin that I was talking about there that I have re-secured. And on the front here, and so then you can see around here, I've cut away an area of the calico um, that is allowing me to work within a window. Now it is really pouring here, um, and I am in a conservatory, so it is quite uh, drippy. Can you guys hear me all all right? Um, can you just give me maybe a thumbs up or um, a wave or something, uh, just so that I know that you guys can hear me? Okay, 
getting some thumbs up. Thanks, guys. See, this is what I love about Instagram Live is that you, you know, I can get some like real time feedback from you guys, and I trust that you you're going to tell me the truth because you've like logged in to see what's going on um, with me, and I sort of feel like oh, I can really get that direct feedback when I need it. Yeah, right. So where we're at, we've mounted up our piece. Um, that's what all these packing stitches around the edge are, is holding the embroidery area in the frame, which is being tensioned by the calico, and that's what's actually framed up, so the top is just placed in on top of that. I have been thinking that perhaps I should do a pro tips on how to mount up things a bit like this. Um, maybe if you guys could send me a smiley face, um, if, you, if that's something you'd be interested in, in me making video wise um, for the future as well. It's also good to know while you're here. I'd, uh, I'd love to know your opinions. So once I have the top with the damaged area mounted up, I prepared my lace. And again, that's a bit more of a slow and tedious process. So I did do that off camera, but I've got a few extras because as you can see like down here, there's a section that um, hasn't, it isn't covered by this current piece of lace. So we're gonna need to add a few extra pieces of lace. So if I just pause my stitching for a second. So over in this little gap here where we've still got the dark bit, what I'm going to do is just to add, I think this little flower into that place. And this is the other great thing that I love about lace applique, is that if you're, you, if you don't have the right shaped piece of lace, but you've got some nice little patterns, you can just make the shape that you need out of the patterns you have. So once you're confident in the techniques and you know how you're going to apply it um, and how it's all going to work, your confidence will grow in that you can take the scissors to your lace and you know really start to look at what the lace is made up of and then what you could do with that. You don't have to be confined by the patterns as they come formed from the maker. You can make it whatever shape you need to make it. I'm gonna think for now I'm gonna leave a couple of these little nice little frond bits. on there. So I've got a couple of like fluffy bits and that should fill that hole quite nicely I think. So just cutting away the bits of lace I don't need and it's not that you know this lace here isn't lovely. It is. It's just not the shape I need right now and that's totally fine to pull away from what already exists to make it what we want it or need it to be. So just coming around to the last bits here. When it comes to cutting your lace, it is worth being patient. You know, you don't want to slice off a little frond that you were really hoping to include. And the tool on which lace is usually made is, is usually quite delicate, you know, so it's very easy to cut through. Okay, so can you see how that's just going to slot in right there? And once I've got it stitched down, I'm pretty confident I'll be able to make that look like it belongs there all the time. But it's just giving me that tiny bit of extra coverage that I require. Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. It's really nice to see some um, familiar names coming into the uh, the comments down below of who is joining. So it's really nice to see some of the regulars. The way I'm set up today, I have got a little bit more trouble seeing the screen. 
So I will go back through afterwards and have a little look at uh, any of your comments that you make. If I miss anything, um, because obviously as they, they scroll through, they do scroll up. And both my hands are currently in use. Um, then I will, I will go back and make sure that I read them all. So do not fear and please do leave me comments. It's always nice to see what you're thinking, how you feel about it. Is this what you thought it would be? Um, yeah, all of those things I am interested to know. So the way I prepared the lace down here is the way that I prepared this one bigger piece of lace. Um, I was quite lucky to still have this big section that fitted the damaged area quite well and that's quite unusual. But this is a separate little piece over here because I've got a little bit more damage on this side that um, is not quite covered. So this is another little separate front, can you see that? So again, I'm confident that I'll be able to make that look like it is part of it. And then we've got quite a few nice little splays off. Um, and you may, if you've seen the picture of um, the top just as it was, then you'll have seen that um, this dart here, this fold that you can see, is actually a really beautiful little like fall that sits into your waist. So some of this is going to get covered over by that dart as it closes and it falls onto the body. But um, I think that that will hopefully make this look like it you know, belongs as part of the top more so than before. And of course, I think I probably should also say that as much as I've been saying this is um, a lace applique repair, which to some extent it is. However, I think repair sort of doesn't quite do it justice because what I'm really hoping here is to make something better, something more beautiful by adding the lace applique and in turn fix the damage. Um, because this is a little bit of a, I was thinking about it earlier and I feel like this is a little bit of a, a bread toast situation. Now what I mean by that is that, you know, if the top is bread and once you've made toast and you've like burnt it, you can't make bread again. But I'm hoping that by adding the lace applique and doing it in quite a considered way, that at the end of this, we won't have bread and we won't have toast. We're gonna have the most like sumptuous cinnamon French toast you ever had in your life. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping to like level it up. And um, yeah, that's my ambition for today. What have you guys been up to since I last saw you? If I've seen you before or if you're new, let me know. I'd love to know how you're doing. Um, is this your first time joining us? Are you new to the London Embroidery School? If so, you are very welcome. And it's really lovely to have you here. I, uh, for our regulars, as I say, there's a few names that I have seen scroll through and a few people that have said hello that it just, it really warms my heart to see some of those repeated names coming up um, who I know have visited our stitch alongs or our online classes before and on Instagram I've got chatting to some of you guys and um, that is, you know, it really makes me so happy to think that I'm obviously doing something that you must like because you, you're coming back. So that is a dream. And a few, well, yeah, a couple of months ago, I definitely wouldn't have thought that this is what we would be doing or I would be doing today or any of the other live days, to be honest. So, uh, Crystal Ingle, hiya. Oh, you're in the US. 
great and it's a beautiful day it's not so much here today i we literally just had thunderstorms i mean i couldn't believe it and it got super dark and i was like what is going on just set up my lighting try and get it how i need it and um no luck whatsoever luckily i think that has passed over now although i'm sure you can probably hear it's a little bit drippy, a bit rainy on my glass roof. Never mind. Seems like you guys are okay with it. Uh, Diane Rose, 2016. Liking the sounds. Um, normally we have more, it's more like bird calls, which I also think is really lovely. But I can't offer that to you today as I think all the birds are, oh, there's a couple. I think they know the storm's over. There they are. Can you guys hear them? starting to come out yeah I find the sounds of, of the conservatory quite um quite soothing to stitch with you know it tends to be quite melodical sounds that happen in here so whether it's listening to birds or um yeah some of you may have heard in my previous ones or the rain that's all good Obviously, we get the birds more when I'm able to have the door open and stay the door is shut. But uh, not to worry. So with my lace applique, I am starting in the centre. And I'm going to work my way out to try and keep that tension nice and even. My recall, oh, you're putting darts into the organdy pieces. Excellent. And got a couple of others. I think it's, is it Asha? Who's uh, making your chiffon roses? Yes, Asha, I think, I hope I'm saying your name right or I'm um, getting it right. Um, is our student of the month which i announced earlier today so our student of the month um, is an instagram competition that we run every month as the title implies and um, we pick someone who has shared a photo and tagged us in it or used the hashtag london embroidery school um, on their photo which is of something that they made in the class or from one of our uh, online classes or using some of the London Embroidery School materials, any of those things, basically somewhere where we've been involved with your work or uh, something you've gone on, a way you've gone on to use a technique that you learnt with us in your own works. Um, and yeah, we just uh, pick someone each month to be the winner and they get 10% off voucher to use on our website, on anything. Um, yeah, and so she is today's winner, or this month's winner, in fact. And yes, if you would like to be May's winner, have a little look on our recent posts. I do post about it uh, every now and then to remind people to join in as it's a way for you to win and make a little saving and get you involved with us. Um, all of which we think are great things. Anyone who's new to the London Embroidery School, um, it would I'd be interested to know how you found us and what you think as well. So do feel free to comment um, on what you're thinking, how you're finding it. Um, are you new to embroidery altogether or are you interested in embroidery but just didn't know about the London Embroidery School? Um, all of those things. So I'm wondering how far I'm going to get in my time with you guys today. I don't know how much time now. Oh, 
20 minutes already. Madness. So I expect that I'll probably go on stitching beyond my hour slot with you guys. Um, but I am recording this separately for a YouTube video that will hopefully go up. I'm going to say tomorrow because if I say tomorrow, it, well, that is our slot to go up, but it has to happen. So providing that the editing gods are kind, pray for me, um, then I will have this full video, the whole process, the stuff that I did before you guys joined me, um, as well as what I'm going to do afterwards as well into one longer video showing you the whole process of this practical use of lace applique. And I really felt strongly that I wanted to do this video with you guys because, you know, I love embroidery. I think that goes without saying and I hope that that comes across to you guys as well. Um, but I, I've never really necessarily enjoyed that the way that it, people often think that embroidery is just for embroidery's sake, like it has no purpose. Because to me, it definitely has purpose um, for me personally. But also I want that I want it to the actual piece to have a function, because I think I do believe that things can be, you know, aesthetically pleasing and functional. That's like, you know, right up there in like winning at life. So this particular piece, when I saw it, I was a bit like, I don't know about you guys, but I've had this piece sitting there waiting to be fixed ever since I did it. And um, it was, I wore it once and then was ready, getting ready to go out and obviously put the iron through it and obviously couldn't wear it then. And then it's sat there since I think last summer, because particularly when you are a, you know, uh, somebody who's got some craft skills or some practical skills and you think, I can fix that. But then you just don't get around to doing it, do you? And I do think that that's how so much clothing on fast fashion ends up in landfill. And I do strongly believe that, you know, we as a society need to take better care of our things. Um, and learning crafts like embroidery and sewing in general allows us to do that. But it also opens up these huge windows on building on a beautiful piece and making it even better. You know, you can put your own spin on it and then you've got something that nobody else has got. I do have to say that um, my opinions are my own. And um, so if, uh, and not necessarily that of, I suppose, the London Embroidery School as a whole, but I do believe that they fall in line with what I think, um, but I am speaking for myself here. Um, oh, I haven't introduced myself, have I? Hello everyone, I'm Natasha. <laughs> um, yes, so I think, you know, it's gotta be a great way to make use of what we have, particularly in these, you know, testing times. We haven't got access to a lot of the luxuries that we have become accustomed to. And, you know, we do need to be aware of going back to some of the more traditional ways, perhaps not on everything, don't get me wrong, but, you know, time spent learning a skill, I always feel is time that is never wasted. And then if you can find a way to use it practically, that's such a win. And I also feel that the best way, you know, to demonstrate to you guys how these things can be used practically is to show you. So here we are. Everything I'm doing stitching wise is um, exactly as we teach it on the London Embroidery School uh, Lace Applique online class. So if you fancy trying this for yourself, do um, head over there and have a little look at the class, see what you think. 
We are a little bit short on kits at the moment, I believe. Um, you guys, when we launched it, went really mad for it and it was amazing. And so those of you who have bought or tried to buy, thank you so much. Um, yeah, we've been blown away. So that in the class we um, learn on a paisley lace. But the class is not that specific to the lace that you use so if you're international and you you know perhaps don't want to pay for postage or you can't get the kit um, if we are sold out you can try purchasing the class without it and if you've got some lace of your own to work with then you know go right ahead and use that um, all of the techniques that we teach are applicable to any type of um, lace that you want to work with and Hopefully what it will teach you is also about really looking at your lace and looking at what you've got to work with and then going from there. Because that's what I'm working on at the moment. This lace is not the lace that we talk about in the class. So um, just for example, you can yeah use whatever lace you like. As you can see with this one, it's got this very heavy cording, which is great for couching over. Um, and you know hides your stitches very well it's also got this much lighter weight cording like in these sections um, that you do need to be a little bit more accurate on if accuracy is something that you struggle with do think about trying to size down your needle a smaller needle will always help you to be more accurate So just a little thought there. I think I, I'm missing loads of comments here, guys. I'm really sorry if I'm missing your questions. Um, just having a quick look. Am I saying through the fabric underneath? No, I'm not. I made a window into the calico and mounted my top using this tacking line to hold it in place and to retension the fabric. But I think, as you guys, I think I got quite a few smiley faces for that. So um, that people said that they were interested in a perhaps a pro tips video on how to mount up embroidery pieces in this fashion. So uh, that's going to go on my list of things to bring to you guys in the near future. Uh, thread type that I'm using. Oh yes, I haven't mentioned that yet. So today I'm working with, uh, it's a Coates Tri Tri Searchy? It's from, yeah, Coates. And it's quite a, th it's actually quite a thick thread, but I do really like it because the twist on it is really fine and really tight. It can make it a bit tricky when you are threading it up. Um, and you do have to be kind of quite careful about your needle choice with this thread but i think it's got a really nice texture that actually um emulates the twist of the cord in this particular lace very well and so i think when i stitch with it although it is thicker it matches really well um, and you can't see the stitches which is the important bit i also have the advantage today that see, this top is not sheer and so um, the positioning of my stitches doesn't have to be quite as specific as some of the techniques that I talk about in the main class. Um, you know, hiding your stitches and how to do that when you're working on sheerer fabrics, because uh, that's obviously one of the big challenges with lace. If you are working on sheer fabrics and, you know, wanting to make it look like the lace is just floating, um, then that's a bit more challenging. So definitely something to work towards. But uh, as I say, I go into full details about that in the class itself. So if you want to know more about it, head over there for the full details. Just gonna finish off this thread because it's getting very short. Trying not to catch that little, this little frond here. Uh, 
Uh, Crystal Lingle, you're very welcome. Anytime, any tips that I can share, I'm happy to. Pop that needle there for a second. So I think we're quite controlled down here. Maybe we can lose a couple of these pins. Now these fronds down here, obviously I'm gonna let just like spill over the hem of the top. So I don't need to secure those, but I will be going back around the edge properly in a few minutes. So I need to come back up this side here. And I've done this guy. Okay, I'm making good progress. Actually, we'll probably need a couple of stitches down here, don't we? Let's start at the beginning. So always anchor your stitches first. That thread nice and secure before you move on. Just little pin tucks up and down on the spot. I know some of you have some questions about where you can buy lace. Um, at the moment, obviously, with the fabric shops being shut, there are a few places online um, that are still shipping so do have a little look at those um of recent we i noticed that a cloth house on berwick street now we are obviously london based and berwick street is one of the local places that we shop in london cloth house on berwick street is uh, still shipping certain fabrics on from their online stores so um if you want something from them, then I believe you should still be able to get it. I'm not sure if they stock lace specifically. That's kind of just a general one. It's something that I've been thinking about. But I think you'll probably find with lace that quite a lot of um, people have you know beautiful bits of lace but it'll just be a little scrap and so they've hung on to it that's what I did with these I mean if I just show you quickly like these are the scraps that I've got to work from you can see that you know there was a straight cut bit here and then it's all kind of been hacked at a little bit um, same with this one here they're all just really small bits but that's the great thing about this is that you can make it into whatever shape you want it to be when you need it to be to fill the shape that you actually require i'm just going to work over this way towards the loose flower to get that popped in place and so this is probably the first bit of the edge that i have done just because I want to get it into place before I add the flower here so that hopefully I can make it look like they belong together their whole lives. I'm just coming up a little bit further out from my lace and pulling it outwards to try and tension it nicely, encourage it to sit flat. And also encourage it to cover up as much of the damage as possible. Oops, I think I might need to just move this one a little bit. You can see I've got a little bit of the cording that's actually coming away from itself here. So I'm going to fix that in a second as well. Yeah, I think I want to get that one right into that corner there. So 
just a loose stick on it and just bend. I'm really glad that the weather has calmed down a little bit because I have to say just before I came on it was absolutely mad just throwing it down the rain was horrendous and then yeah as I say there was a little bit of thunder and lightning and I was like oh my goodness I spent all this time setting up my lighting trying to make sure that my angles are all good for my stitching and then Lo and behold, nature decides that uh, they're going to wreck my setup. <laughs> Never mind. But, yeah. You can see some blue skies rolling in now. That's very welcome. just pulling the lace together a little bit just to try and cover over the damage and also to make it look more like it always was this way. Okay, let's lose that pin now. That then gives me the ability to have a little look under there. that down. Now because of this dart obviously I have got a little bit of bounce in here so I'm going to be quite gentle with my tension. I don't want to really highly tension the thread so that when we take it out of the frame and the top is able to fall how it would normally naturally fall, just want to make sure that it is looking nice and natural and that the thread is not causing us any issues. So for those of you who have joined us a little bit later on, I can see some of you have questions about um, the calico base. So I've got the calico with a big window cut into it for this whole area and that's what the tacking stitches are. So the tacking stitches are holding the top tensioned into the hole in the calico so that I'm just stitching through the window in the calico. So there won't be any calico on the back of my embroidery when I'm done, although you can do that in some circumstances where you need to secure and uh, reinforce your embroidery with a more solid background. I did, however, because the top was damaged and if you guys have seen the photo, um, had some holes in it, I did violene iron on some backing. Um, to secure that area and to make sure that I've got some weave to stitch into. Because I obviously want to make sure that if I'm putting in all of this effort for the embroidery, because you know, embroidery does take good time, um, then not only are we giving some life back to this top, but I want it to have longevity. I don't want it to fall apart after its last, uh, after its first rewear. So um, it's important to try and secure down the area first. And I guess that's the part of this that is about repairing the damage. And the lace part is actually more about disguising it. Okay, 
again, I'm going to end off this thread. So I've uh, obviously seen that a couple of people are based in the UK. A couple have said that they're from the US. Where's everybody else tuning in today from? I'm obviously in the UK, um, unsurprising given that we are the London Embroidery School. I'd love to hear where you're tuning in from. Starting my new thread here. Oh, someone in Twickenham. Awesome. Know it well. Very nice part of the world. Oh, and somebody in South London. Okay, so we're pretty local right now. That's cool. Glad to hear that we are reaching some local people. Are you familiar with the London Embroidery School? Like, did you know about us before? Or did you just come across me today? Oh, in somebody else in the Peak District. Oh, how beautiful. I, you have such a treat up there. I'm very envious. Sheffield, South Yorkshire, wonderful part of the world. We've uh, last at the end of last year, we started to do quite a few um, events with our um, sister company, Hawthorne and Heaney, who do bespoke embroidery. We do a lot of uh, events work through them. And um, we were up and down to Sheffield all the time. Lovely people. Really welcoming. Because our girls were sort of going up there and staying for a few days, maybe working the weekend, coming back down. Yeah, it was, uh, it was excellent. Somebody else from Wellingborough. Nice. I can't say I know where that is. But I am delighted to have you join me all the same. Perhaps you can enlighten me. My geography is not very good, can you tell? I'm good at some things, but geography is not one of them. So Crystal, oh you you damaged some lace in in a car door. Yeah, I think you should definitely try um, replacing a small section if you can. Perhaps think about whether you can um, can you salvage some of the same lace from somewhere else. Like, could you make? This, I don't know. Obviously, I don't know the style of the, the top but could you make the sleeves perhaps an inch or two shorter and then use the fabric from that inch or two to repair the damage and sort of give it an, another good finish um so you know re-even everything out perhaps something to think about something we uh it's kind of how you would go about doing an invisible mend because I don't know if you guys know very much about invisible mending and it's very much a bit of a, a dying art. And I have to say, I know the theory, but I don't do it myself. Um, I, cause I don't think, I don't think I know anyone who can actually do it to the right level basically. But, um, yeah, it, with invisible mending, what normally happens is that in order to make it actually invisible, they, salvage um, threads from places like the hem and they will in the seams and they harvest the threads from those unseen areas where they think they can afford to take away a few millimeters worth of cloth and then they 
use those threads to reweave, and it's usually woven garments that this is done on, um, to reweave back in some of the damaged area to make it invisible and to literally replace um, the threads that are missing so that everything is invisible. It's a, it really is a skill. I mean, I, as I say, I've never, I've not actually come across anyone in recent years who knows it well enough, I think, but um, be something I would be fascinated to learn. If anyone knows anyone and wants to hook me up, I would love to hear from them. Because we can all learn new things. Just because I think I've got some things that I can show you uh, doesn't mean that there aren't things that I could learn too. Okay, so this little bit into the dart, it's kind of fighting me quite hard here. So I'm going to secure around that section the bit that I'm comfortable with, but I'm probably going to leave it loose for the moment and then I'll see how it's falling when I um, take it out of the frame and I'll probably come perhaps go back into their freehand. Okay, so Crystal, uh, the damage is at the bottom of the sleeve. Anyway, um, yeah, add a couple of little extras then and uh, see how that goes. But that's exactly the sort of thing that I was hoping that people might start to be able to think about applying this to your own pieces and how you might be able to level up pieces. Basically by adding something really beautiful, you know, is that not what we uh, all want to achieve? Uh, thank you for your kind comments about my hands. They're a little bit, uh, they're not actually at their best at the moment. Um, obviously, given that the current situation and all the hand washing, they're a little bit on the dry side, but whose aren't? Um, I, I hear you ask. Everyone's in the same boat on that front, I think. I can't recommend using, you know, hand creams and balms enough. Please do take care of your hands. Um, you know, I would like to know that the hands that you're using to make lovely things also deserve to be cared for. You know, do give it, give them some love. Um, right, I'm just going to try and remove a few. So, yeah, I haven't come, did I come this way? No, not yet. So, I need to leave that one in there. That's my needle. So we need to come over here. Yeah, we need to come over this side. So then we'll go back round and secure all the edge. And obviously, because of all the fronds, we have got quite a long edge. It's much longer than if it was just a circle, you know, because of all the ins and outs and ins and outs. But that's part of what makes it beautiful. So that was only a comment, it was not a complaint by any, any stretch of the imagination. I'm sure you guys, if you have a little dig in your cupboards, will probably find that you've got some um, some bits that you could use in a similar way to this. The lace you use doesn't necessarily need to be a corded lace by any means. This one looks quite um, quite like a French lace, I'd say. And I have had this these scraps of lace, as I mentioned, they really are scraps, um, for really some years now. Um, probably seven or eight years, I'd say. And it's one of those things that, you know, lace is so pretty, you tend not to throw it away, but then it's finding a use for it. So perhaps today will be the um, little bit of a push. You need to have a dig through your cupboards, see what you've got. Because as I say, it doesn't have to be um, a lace either that's necessarily built, built on a tool. 
you might find that in fact some things like um i often think you know old linen has some beautiful work on it and often the linen itself wears out before the embroidery does so it might be worth if you find that you have some pieces like that you might want to use this once you've built up your confidence a little bit and do remove the if the it, of course this is if the linen is past its best but rather than losing the whole piece you could remove the um embroidered work sections or anything like that and apply them somewhere else because once you know the skills about your application you can start applying anything and it's this is one of those techniques that um it does get used quite a lot in things like restoration because a lot of the time some of the threads will have disintegrated particularly on very old pieces so i think like uh, victoriana pieces often the tool that they build they built the beadwork onto will start to disintegrate but the beads themselves are perfect so if you can remove the beads in kind of in formation oh, i'm talking like um victorian morning shawls and that sort of thing here uh you can remove the beads and secure it onto another tool piece by applying it in this fashion hiding your stitches within the constructs of the existing beaded piece so that they sort of fall in line with the aesthetics that you can already see and then you can what they do is they very slowly tease out the rotted away fabric because unfortunately that's what it does it has you know it does rot and disintegrate under there um, not in a horrible way but just in a way that it's no longer stable and then um it means that people are the the restorers are able to rescue that piece and to keep its structure by replacing the parts that are too far gone really sort of finding my rhythm now with it. After a little while you do get quite sort of set into your pattern. Uh, Craftworks, thank you for saying that um, I make it look easy. Honestly, it is quite easy. You can definitely do this too. I'm confident that you can. Like most things with embroidery, it's really about practice and patience. And so with a little of each of those, I am confident that you guys can achieve something similar. So Crystal's obviously shared the project that she's got in mind uh, for this technique. Anybody else got any pieces in mind that they want to work on? Uh, yes, it is a labour of love, uh, Diane Rose. But what isn't, you know? Everything with embroidery as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> but I, said, I did really love this top. So, you know, I think it's worth it. So 
some of you may have noted that um, I stitch with both hands so it's just my left hand that stays on the top of the frame here and you'll I doubt you will have seen my right hand pretty much at all um, just the occasional thing where I've had a, a knot or something I might bring it to the top but not very often this is uh, an embroidery style that professional embroiderers use so that you don't waste the time of your hand passing above and below the frame for every stitch and is achievable because today I am currently working on my preferred choice of small frame, small round frame, which is a table clamp frame. So it literally has a barrel that attaches to my table, it's clamped onto it, and so that means that I don't need to hold the hoop and I'm able to therefore stitch with both hands, so keeping my left hand on the surface and I pass the needle back and forth between my hands. and don't uh, lose the time that it takes my hand to pass above and below every time. A little something to think about. And we do have a pro tips video, it's just a short one, on um, using both hands for stitching. If it's something of interest to you, you might like to check out that's on our YouTube channel, London Embroidery School. It's fairly new, but you guys seem to be liking it so far, so we're really pleased about that, and thank you for engaging with it. Okay, so I'm going to come over I know I'm rapidly heading towards the end of this session I'm going to come over and just do this uh, loose flower over here and then I think apart from this small section here we should be pretty much otherwise secure yeah just down here that needs to be done I don't think I need that pin anymore. So then, yeah, it will just be the outside edge that I need to go around and do. And as I say, that will probably be more a part of the uh, YouTube video that is yet to come. And as soon as that's up, I will, of course, tell you guys. Fancy checking it out? I'm just going to put the small petals in underneath so let's secure this edge. First of all, and then I'll come over, come back up here. For the minute, come back up for a second. Thank you so much for all your comments today. Um, as I say, I've obviously been uh, quite preoccupied with my stitching and I know I've missed quite a few, but I will be going back through and have a look at them all. Um, so really thank you for engaging with me and um, I've been delighted to have you. I am rapidly heading towards the end of my session now.
so I will sign off. Um, yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for coming and um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Let us know if you have um, so that I can try and plan to do more of this type of session. And um, if you have enjoyed it, let me know. Otherwise, I hope that you guys have a fabulous day and that you're feeling a little bit inspired to hopefully try something like this of your own. And that is the Instagram live session done. Coming back in here to work around the edge now that I've pretty much got all the centres secured.
Okay, so I think I'm just about ready to remove the tacking, release it from the frame. So we've got a couple of bits that need to be added to, but that's fine. A few additions that I made to the, um, the sprays. then didn't quite fit in my window. Okay. There we go. So let's um look I'm gonna still let drape it over the frame just not in the window. Just helps to control things a little bit. A little look at the underside there. So this is a great way when you've got your frame wrapped like this means you can just roughly pin your garments to it when you just want a little bit of rough tension just to hold things in place so it's not going to actively slide off of my frame that would be annoying so I'll just hold that there for a minute Now I can come in here, do what I need to do. I'm very gentle with my tension here because the fabric isn't tensioned fully so I don't want anything to be pulling
see if we can get him over here. in time for another thunderstorm here. Finished. And here we have my finished piece, and um, just letting that dart fold closed again. But you can see how the lace goes into the dart there, and again round this seam, just extending slightly onto the back and down off the hem to make it look like it belongs. Um, I think it's safe to say that you can't see the burn mark anymore, and wouldn't know that there was anything that had ever gone wrong under there, which after all I believe is the aim of the game. Um, I feel like this design works particularly well because the design of the top is quite asymmetrical to start with anyway, so having a little asymmetrical flourish sort of just adds to that and uh, doesn't detract from the piece at all, which is what we're looking for of course. Do have a little think when you're thinking about working on a piece, what's going to suit it best and do you need to match it? I'm quite happy to have it uh, one-sided on this particular piece. So I hope you're feeling inspired to try Lace Oblique out for yourself as a repair method. All the useful links I will pop in the description box below. So um, there will be the link to the class and the kit should you want it, um, as well as uh, some of the equipment that I've been using today as an idea in case you want to get your own. Thank you for joining me and uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Give us a like if you did and if you're new please subscribe to the channel so that you can know when we first put up new content which is usually every Friday at least and sometimes on Mondays too. Alright bye for now see you in the next video.